This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Visit them via the link in the description below for all your PCB services. I've been using them for years, so make sure you try them out. Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's part 3 of the 3457A repair. And uh, if you'd seen part 1 and part 2, especially part 2, I was attempting to rewind the transformer and came across some issues in regard in the primary winding. Um, so I just bit the bullet in the end and I unwound the primary winding and I just rewound it for 240 volts only. And lo and behold, after playing about with a number of turns, I've managed to get it working. I'm now getting the secondaries, the multiple tap-ins on the secondaries that uh, I need. Uh, according to the 3457A documentation and it seems to be working okay. So I've got it fit enough that I can put it back into the unit uh, just for testing purposes in order to just give power to the the, the chassis here that I can start troubleshooting and uh, see if there's any other faults in the hardware but I suspect actually the problem all along uh, the reason this was faulty was because of the transformer so I've not finished working on the transformer uh, I've got some other laminates here that I've fitted from another transformer that I had lying around because I do actually want to clean up the original ones because I think they were working a little bit better in terms of the field that it was being generated and also no load current that the transformer was uh, consuming and um, with these plates on it here um, even with nothing connected to the secondaries um, drawing about 100 milliamps on the transformer um, and I think with the other plates it was a good bit less than that but the other plates are all scratched and I do want to clean them up and recoat them before I put them back onto this bobbin here. Um, the reason being, these plates do actually have a, a very, very thin uh, insulation layer on them uh, to stop them from conducting against each other um, for the most part. And I do want to retain that. Obviously, these ones here are from another transformer, brand spanking new, and it came apart really easily. So I was able to just... Uh, fit these straight away onto this unit here or identical size so um, like I said for the time being this one will do the job I'm just going to loosely screw it to the chassis in here uh, right now and then we can start troubleshooting the boards and see if there's any other problems especially on the power supply side okay there's the temporary installation I've not bothered fitting it in to where it needs to go because it would just need to come out again so it's uh, the wiring's through the gap through the hole and I've earthed it and all the rest of it and my uh, primary wires are way through and they're on the connector um, here uh, as per original and the secondaries are all plugged in so next thing to do is to start checking the power supply circuits on both the units with the unit off let's see if there's any dead shorts or anything like that okay I've gone ahead actually off camera and checked that the secondaries are all intact and there's no dead shorts there's no dead shorts on the unregulated DC the rectifier diodes on both sections the digital and the analog sections are intact there's no dead shorts across the 5 volt 15 volt to uh, minus 15 volt supplies or any of the DC supplies on the unit at all um, so I think I'm safe enough now to go and power it up now don't see any other damage like I said in the first video so I've got an AC lead hooked in um, a suitably rated fuse on the uh, fuse holder on the back of the unit um, I've still got a 500 milliamp fuse in there um, due to the transformer taking a no load current of about 100 milliamps so the 500 will do at the moment and uh, we're ready for a power up so I've got the power on so let's hit the switch in the front and see what happens and we've got power up GPIB address 5 <laughs> and we've got uh, a display and some analog activity there on the millivolt DC so straight away first thing I'm going to do is start checking the supplies uh, the DC supplies uh, on the board and make sure they're okay 
So the first thing I want to do, I do actually want to go right round the unregulated DCs coming from the rectifier diodes into the various regulators on both of the boards and make sure they are not overdriving the various regulators etc. Um, they're all TO220 packages so dead easy to go over and find them and start to measuring the voltages. So I'll go and do that now. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the digital board first and that needs to pick up a zero volts. The zero volts on the digital board is connected to the chassis so I can just pick up the chassis at the back for the zero volts on my multimeter. And we'll put power on. Yep. Five volt regulators down here. So there is the unregulated going into the re uh, five volt regulator, 11 volts, and it's output. Five volts exactly. Perfect. That's the only regulator on that board there in regards to the power supply, so I can move across to the other side. It's got an isolated supply, so I need to remove the ground and I'll just go across the 5 volt regulator here, which is the 0 volts, and still got power on. And then this is the input to that regulator there 11.9 volts. And the output, there's three jumpers on the board here, which are clearly marked plus 15, plus 5, and minus 15. So if I could just go across them. There's plus 15, yep, 15.2 volts. There's the plus 5 volts, yep, and the minus 15, yep, minus 14.9 volts. So the power supply appears to be working. Perfect. So what I think I'll do now is actually hook in my PDVS2 Mini, I'll set it to 10 volts, and let's see what we're getting on display. Let's see if the actual uh, analog board's working okay. Um, so let me reposition the camera for that, and we'll try to give that a go. Okay, here we go with the PDVS2 Mini. I'll just hook up. It's been on for a few minutes now, so it's on its way to warming up. And the connection's here. And we'll put power back on. <laughs> Look at that. Ten, 10 volts exactly. Now let me just bring this down. 1 volt. And then there's a one I like to use. 1.234... Five, six. 1.2345.6 volts and you can see it's pretty close. And just out of curiosity, let's get some more digits on the display. i um, got one volt coming in at the moment, as you can see you've got five digits there. So I'm going to change the NPLC to 100. Let's get a nice power line cycles. And I'm going to change the digits to be displayed, put it to maximum, and let's see what we get there. MPLC will be slow to read. That's pretty close. So there we've got six digits after the decimal point. One volt coming in. Uh, if I go up to ten, of course we'll lose one. It'll take a little while to settle because I've put in such a large NPLC. And if we go up to 2 volts. That's oh, perfect. So let me try 0 0.1 to... Three, four, five. Zero point one, two, three, four, five volts. So that's one, two, three point four. Meh, it's a little bit down on the second digit there. It's tens of microvolts. Fine. Really happy with that so far. 
So the next thing I'm actually going to do is clean up the front panel. Now this red stuff here that's completely coated the front of it, or most of it anyway, is embedded itself into the plastic. I've tried uh, IPA, I've tried Windex, and it's just not shifting it at all. And I'm a little bit afraid if I start rubbing it down too heavily, especially over the text, etc., it's just going to make them disappear as well. So I think I've got no choice, but I'm going to have to make use of this spare panel that I've got here. You can see the difference. However, this front panel has a problem, and that is this button here has just been completely chewed, as you can see there. So I want to use this rubber membrane on this panel here and that'll be the best of both worlds. However, there is a problem. There's a circuit board in the back here and in order to get the membrane out I have to remove that board. However, it's not screwed into place. It's melted <laughs> into place. This large circuit board's got a series of holes on it and the, the plastic part comes through the holes in the circuit board and is melted into place. So I'm going to have to cleave off all of those melted parts so that the board can then come off. And then when I've assembled up the new panel, I'll probably use epoxy resin down through the holes before I refit it onto the panel and that'll effectively glue it back into place again. So the way I'm actually going to cleave them is using one of these blades out of my box and a hammer. So I've got the panel on the bench and I've actually started doing some and it's rather uh, working out pretty good. Let me just get this out of the way. And I just lay the blade down. Luckily these blades are quite flexible so I can lay the blade down so it's actually flat on the circuit board. I'm not digging into it. And just hammer it slightly and that's it cleaved perfectly. So I'll just go over them all. Right, that should be it. So the board should actually come out now. And that's it. Wow, that's pretty neat. There's all the contacts. A little bit of tarnish on the, right around the edge a little. Probably where it's been, you know, the air the, can get to it. Um, but otherwise it's uh, pretty good. Well, it looks like it's tarnished anyway. It's certainly a different colour. So put that aside. And here is the membranes. And that's the one that's all chewed up. So I'll remove all these and uh, disassemble the one on the multimeter and uh, get all the new the parts put together again. That's both boards off and I'll just tra start transferring the parts from the left to the right. And I'll pick the best of the displays. This one's got that red residue all over it. In actual fact, I think this other one, the spare one's actually in better condition, so I think I'll use it. Now, the rubber membranes themselves, I'll give them a little bit of a wipe down, I think. Not too bad, a little bit dusty, that's all. The red residue has actually got down on this one, down past the keys themselves, but it doesn't seem to have... Uh, 
hurt them at all. It just it's just wiping off. Even that red residue is wiping off. Obviously resistant. There we go. And a bit of a sanity check just to make sure they're the right way round. None of them are upside down. <laughs> And then the circuit board itself. And get this one out of the way now. So I think I can put epoxy down the holes, put some weight on here on the back of the board and uh, let it harden, let it dry and harden and I think that should be enough to hold the board in place. Okay so what I've done is I put a little bit of super glue down the holes just because it's a little bit runnier than epoxy and it'll grab the sides of the PCB uh, and the actual stub of the plastic that I sheaved off and then I'll top it off with a nice knob of epoxy resin and the good thing is about doing it this way is it, it is reversible I should be able to break it off or cleave it off again in the future but it should be enough to hold it as well didn't really want to do it completely permanently with epoxy resin underneath the PCB because it would just be impossible then to get the circuit board off in the future. And I've got a nice set of clamps here to hold the board in place. Little mini plastic clamps. Amazing what you can buy off of eBay. Okay that's the panel already. I just need to refit it. It can be a little bit of a pain. To fit you kind of got to, this end's easy, but this end's a little bit of a pain, you have to lift the circuit board up and the this end sort of tongue and grooves it sort of thing and the fuse holder comes through the hole and that's it. Yep. Now I can put the screw in and button it up and refit the wires. As I said earlier they're all colour coded. Yellow, grey, orange, okay I think we're ready to power it up, we'll plug in the display, front panel, it's that there, and we're ready for a power up. LCD is working and how about some front panel controls NPLC 25 enter perfect yep all three banks of uh, push buttons are working perfect there's a couple other things I need to do and one of them is to change out this line filter I think this is a Schaefer line filter, they are prone to failure in quite a big way if I remember correctly. The other thing is I will check the battery, make sure we've got uh, a decent voltage on there. Um, that will be for the memory retention, calibration retention, should be okay. Um, the, the unit's obviously still calibrated because uh, I was getting spot on readings earlier on. and. Uh, I've still got some wires to solder on to these uh, BNCs in the back there but I won't do that uh, because they've got the secondary connector because I may be removing that obviously to play about with the transformer and get the plates changed over or varnish it, that sort of thing. Uh, it's easily removable but this side's all buttoned up, ready to go. So let's get on with the uh, transformer again. 
Well, I kind of changed my mind about uh, going back to the original laminate, so I just decided to varnish the new one that I'd put together. I'm using uh, MR8008, which is an insulating varnish designed for transformers. So I'm just painting it on with a small brush, um, especially around the sides there where, the, where you can see the laminates, but also down and amongst all the... the uh, windings and on the faces, just everywhere actually, so I'll just get on with that now. I've already done the bottom side, so I can just leave it dry in like this. I think years ago we used to dip them and then hang them, uh, but uh, I'm not going to bother doing that today. I'll just get the brush down everywhere and get as much as of it down inside it the laminates as I can. And especially on the primary winding where the capped on tape is just to fix it properly in place. A thin coat to start with just so I make sure it gets everywhere and then I'll be quite liberal with it. There we go and we'll leave that to dry. And there we go, that's a transformer all varnished up, dry and refitted to the 3457. Now as you can see on the back, what I've also gone ahead and done is mask off the line selection switches in the back with a couple of 240 volt uh, stickers so there's no confusion. And a uh, quick look on the inside. There it is all backed together again. So I'll, all I've got to do now is put back in the uh, metal shield and we'll uh, power it up again and make sure it's still working. And there we go, another instrument for the workshop. Thanks for watching.